on guys? A couple of weeks ago we added these custom 3D printed intake vents to my front lower grill. Now at the moment these are purely aesthetic but the whole point of this video is to change that and get these things functional. So if you haven't seen that video where I smooth painted, wrapped and installed those vents then make sure you go check that out because not only do I show you how to do it but I also let you know where you can get a set for yourself. I'll leave a link to that video in the description or you can just click in the top corner. But like I said the purpose of today's video is to get these vents functional. They have a little collector on the back which should let us funnel air up to the air filter. For as long as I've been into cars there's been a never ending debate on intake temperatures and whether or not cone and pod filters actually reduce engine performance due to heat soak because they're not in a proper enclosure. So I was hoping that if we can run some air ducting up to the filter then we should be able to get some cooler intake temperatures which will hopefully improve performance. Now unfortunately I don't have access to a dyno or any way of measuring the power before and after fitting a cold air feed to the intake. But what I can do is measure the intake temperature and see if it's any cooler after fitting that duct in from the vents to the air filter. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while will remember this cool little 3D printed clock that I got from UNA Performance but as well as being a digital clock it's also got two temperature sensors so the plan is to run one of those to the air intake and then we can measure the temperature before and after fitting the duct in from those vents when i installed the clock i just left the temperature sensors behind the glove box so if we pop that out you can see i've just run the wires into here and hopefully this will be long enough to go through the firewall and into the engine bay so that we can run this to the air filter now when i installed the clock i did just try and run one of these sensors up through this large grommet that takes the loom through to the engine bay but it was just way too tight i couldn't push this really thin wire through there so i'm gonna have to drill a small hole somewhere else in the firewall and just make sure that it's not gonna get in the way of anything i'll probably just make a hole behind here somewhere if we look in the engine bay you can just see that large grommet in the back there and from the looks of it there's nothing else around it on that one side so i'm just going to drill through there and then i'm just going to use one of these small grommets in the hole to not only protect the cable but also stop water and anything getting inside the car okay so i've just ripped a little hole in this sound deadening so that i can see what i'm trying to drill through and now i can drill a small hole in the firewall okay so i've drilled the hole and got the little grommet in there so now if i grab the temperature sensor wire it's just got this little end on it to poke that through the grommet and then i'm just going to reach in under here and try and pull it through from the engine bay side there we go that's probably about as far as it's going to come and luckily once i root it a bit more cleverly than that but we should at least be able to get this into the air filter i'll probably just slip it inside here or something and then we're away so i want the sensor to definitely hang round about in the middle so i'm just going to try and hold it there while i reassemble the filter i don't know how this is going to go but hopefully that'll be okay and then i think that's roughly where i want it hopefully I'll just reassemble this and we're all good. Cool, done. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the car and I'm gonna keep a close eye on these temperatures. I need to figure out which one is the external sensor that I've just put inside the air filter and which one's here inside the cabin, but I'm guessing the one inside the cabin is that one because it's 17 degrees. And if we go back to the other one, 14.5 so hopefully that's the one that's in the engine bay so i'm going to start the engine and hopefully this will stabilize we'll see what sort of temperature this gets up to once the car's warm and then that'll tell us what sort of temperature the intake's getting when the car's just sort of stationary when it's warmed up and then we're going to go for a drive and see what sort of temperatures are going into the intake without any air ducting just driving normally with that comb filter and then afterwards we're going to install that ducting and then try again and see if the temperature is any less okay i've literally just started up the car and already you can see that temperature starting to climb. Okay, so I just tried to figure out which sensor was which. So here's the other one. This is the one I've left inside. So as you can see, that's dropping at the minute. I just covered it up with my fingers like that. And you can see that one going up. So that's definitely this sensor that I've got here in the car, because if I let go of this one, after it gets to 20 degrees, that starts to fall again. 
So that's definitely the one inside the car. So we know that this one is the engine bay temperature. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and the car is pretty much up to temperature, or at least cool and wise it is. And on the intake, we've got just over 33 degrees. It is still climbing slightly, but let's go for a drive and see if that gets any cooler as cold air comes into the front of the car. Okay, so I'm just traveling through a little 30 limit and as you can see, the temperature is already a lot cooler. And I mean, this is just with the normal way that air comes into the engine bay. So it's clearly quite good already, but hopefully, we can change that. So I'm just gonna accelerate a little bit. And as you can see, traveling at around 60 miles an hour, gets that temperature even lower. So let's get back and install that air duct in and see if we can get it down further. Okay, so I've just got back and stuck the car up on the ramp tray to install that air duct in there. As you can see, it's starting to go dark. Again, this happens a lot at the moment because I only get to film on weekends. But I'm gonna go ahead and install that. I'm probably not gonna be able to show you me actually putting it in just simply because of the lack of daylight that I actually have. But I'm gonna get that done. I'll show you it once I've installed it and then we can go out and test and see if we're actually getting any colder intake temperatures with it. Okay, so I've got the duct in installed and I'm just gonna show you quickly what I've done. I have actually only got one of the vents hooked up. I do have another piece of duct in, but there just wasn't really enough room to run it. From the driver's side vent all the way along here and up to the air filter, but have got the passenger side one installed. As you can see, it's just held on there by a cable tie. Do you remember from when we installed these, there is a little lip around the collector on these, so it just holds it on there nicely. And then I've got a couple of other cable ties just holding it in there. There was a bracket on here that was something to do with the original air box. There was like some weird little um, thing here. I, I don't even know what it is, but that went out a long time ago and I just removed the bracket, which is there. So. I had space to fit this and then another cable tie just around there, around some of the brackets up here. And then I've just tied another one right at the top around these lines that I ran for the relocation of the power steering fluid reservoir. And then you can see just about, you can just see the foam of the filter up there and it goes right up to it. So the ducting stops just there, just underneath the filter. Unfortunately, there is like a radiator hose or something like that in the way. Uh, which is a bit of a pain. But hopefully it'll help to cool that down as well because I would have thought that this radiator hose probably contributes to heat soak with pod filters and cone filters like this. So hopefully it'll cool that down as well. And hopefully the air will actually get around it to the filter. And hopefully this will make a noticeable difference, but we'll have to test it out and see. Just while we're under here, that other piece of air ducting that I have got, some people in the video where I installed the vents for this actually suggested maybe we don't run both of them to the filter anyway, and maybe we use this other side for something else, maybe like cooling down the brakes or something like that. Yes, I just have the standard brakes on here at the moment, but I have got some brake upgrades coming in future videos. I've already got a lot of the parts that I need. It's just gonna take me a bit of time to get them ready. So if you wanna see some brake upgrades coming on this car, and by the way, it's not gonna be the traditional ST170 brake upgrade that a lot of people do with these. It is gonna be something a little bit different. So if that's something you wanna see and you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so you don't miss that. So for now, we're just gonna run with this one and see how much of a difference this makes. Hopefully it does make one, but we'll find out shortly. Okay, so the car's up to temperature. We've lost one degree outside, but not to worry. And as you can see, the temperature in the engine bay is climbing. So let's get on the road, test it again at 30 miles an hour and at 60 and see what sort of temperatures we're getting in the intake. Okay, so we're just traveling along through a little 30 limit and already you can see the temperature is cooler than it was when we tested it earlier without the ducting and it's still dropping as well. Fortunately, this isn't a very long stretch. I'm not sure exactly what that's gonna get down to, but I'll start the camera again once we're at 60 miles an hour and see just how cool we can get those intake temperatures. So there you go, as you can see, we're already noticeably cooler at 60 miles an hour. It'd be awesome if I could get it under 10 degrees, but I think we're probably gonna run out of road for that. Unfortunately, I haven't got any really long straights or long stretches of road where I can continuously do 60, but they are continuing to fall as I keep driving, but then if I do have to slow down to come into a speed limit, I notice the temperature does creep up quite quickly as well. But not to worry, I definitely think that is a marked improvement over you know, not fitting that air duct in, so that is awesome. And if I notice any lower temperatures, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, so there we go. We now have a functional cold air intake system. But before we end this video, there is just a couple of little things that I want to cover. When I went on the first run before fitting that cold air feed, I just let the car warm up on the driveway and then took it straight out. And the 30 mile an hour limit that I did the first little bit of testing in was just down the road here. So the car didn't really have much time to warm up properly on the road. Then when I fitted the cold air feed, 
and went on the second run, I actually let the car warm up on the driveway and then had to drive it for about 10 minutes before I actually got a decent stretch of road to properly test it out because I was stuck in traffic, kept coming up to things where I had to slow down and stop, which made the temperatures in the engine bay rise again. So I actually would have got a much better reading. I was keeping an eye on the clock when I first set off on the second run with that cold air feed and it got down to something like eight degrees intake temperature but I couldn't replicate that later on because the engine actually had time to warm up properly on the road. And I think if I'd done the first run in the same way and actually drove it around for about 10 minutes or so before actually taking a reading, I think we would have had a much higher temperature on that first run, meaning that we had a bigger difference and it would have reduced the temperature a lot more on the second one. Another thing I noticed on the second run, I actually went for a blast up the dual carriageway and when I was slowing down for roundabouts and when I came up behind traffic, I actually noticed that the engine temperatures rose really quickly and it took quite a while for them to get down again. So I definitely think heat soak is still gonna be an issue with this. So I wanna take this a step further. In the future, I'm gonna look at a way of actually protecting that comb filter from the engine bay temperatures with some sort of enclosure or just some sort of shield to try and keep that air temperature going into that filter a lot cooler and not getting that heat soak from the engine. Because I've been doing some reading and watched a couple of really interesting videos on YouTube about the effects of keeping air intake temperatures colder, one in particular I watched by Engineer and Explain, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description so you can check that out yourself because I definitely think there is something in this keeping intake temperatures a lot cooler. Now if you want to do this for yourself I'll also leave a link to the air ducting that I bought in the description below and if you want to find out where you can get a set of those vents for yourself then make sure you go and check out the video where I installed them. Again I'll leave a link in the description so you can find it but for this video it is time to end thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.